In my last video, I talked about different power options for the Sony a6300 and also shared this cheap and easy to assemble external USB power pack. In that video, I also mentioned that the camera consumes at most 0.87 amps from USB and it doesn't matter whether it's the battery pack or the wall socket, 0.87 amps is the limit. And after some runtime testing, I noticed that the internal battery was still depleting but at a much slower rate than it would be if it was just the internal battery alone. So, using the dummy battery and this power pack here, I was able to determine that the camera consumes roughly 6.5 watts of power uh, on average. Uh, there are some spikes up a little past 7 and some dips, but on average the camera is consuming about 6.5 watts. So, what all this means is that the USB power pack is providing about 4.3, 4.4 watts of power. The internal battery is providing about 2 a little over two watts of power, all in all equaling six and a half watts on average. Of course, if you use a dummy battery with a power pack, uh, the power pack will provide all of the power necessary to run the camera. Now that brings us to the next issue, which is heat dissipation. Most people who are using the internal battery alone, as well as Sony's own manual, will tell you that you can only get about 20 to 30 minutes of record time from the battery. In fact, Sony's manual says 20 minutes, period. Um, now, when I put the USB pack on, I noticed that I got about 45 minutes out of this uh, solution recording continuously. When I used the dummy battery and this power pack set to 7.5 volts, I got roughly an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. But something interesting also happened. I set this power supply to 8.5 volts and ran it and got somewhere on the order of an hour and 45 minutes be before overheating. Now, that is not a scientific result, it was just my observation over the course of three different tests that showed me that 8.5 volts seemed to generate less heat in the camera than 7.5 volts. I'm not exactly sure how the camera deals with power on the inside, but that's interesting to me. So what this means is that photographers should be well served by the USB option. Uh, in photography modes, the camera does not consume enough power to overheat unless it's left out in direct sunlight for an extended period of time. Uh, now, I was out at uh, the Indy 500 this weekend. I was in direct sunlight the whole time. I had absolutely no problems with this configuration, and I shot all day without having to replace any batteries. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that photographers will enjoy this solution. Also, I would say that independent filmmakers uh, will get good use out of this as well. Uh, filmmakers are generally recording 4K video in fairly short bursts, uh, 30 seconds to 2 minutes at the most. Uh, and uh, if you turn off your camera once in a while, you'll have no problem with heat overheating either. Now, if you're using the camera on a gimbal, uh, for example, the one that I use is the Pilotfly H1, uh, you shouldn't have any problems either. It takes actually very little airflow to keep the camera cool. So just being on the gimbal and moving around should have uh, the effect of keeping the camera cool at least beyond your ability to hold the gimbal. Those things do get heavy after a little while. So that leaves people shooting long events or long events in hot conditions. And for those people, I would definitely recommend uh, the dummy battery option and then mounting your power supply on a gimbal or on your uh, shoulder rig or however you're handling it. But there is one more thing you could do, which is to rig up a small computer fan on your tripod to blow gently over the camera. Again, the amount of airflow that this requires to keep cool is very small. I was, even with uh, just the internal battery, I was able to keep the camera cool just by waving a few times every, uh, every few minutes. What I also found is that there are ways to make the camera never overheat by simply reducing the amount of power that it draws. Um, again, turn off wireless. Uh, if you can, disable your optical image stabilization and take the camera out of continuous autofocus mode. All of those things do consume a small amount of power. The largest thing that consumes power is the internal encoder that's writing to the SD card. Uh, and by using an external recorder like an Atomos Ninja, uh, you can save about a watt and a half of power. Now, the camera by nature seems to uh, be okay with about 5 watts of power. Uh, anything more than that, it has trouble dissipating. So let me just summarize this again. Uh, 
internal battery will heat the camera up very quickly, get maybe 20 to 30 minutes of record time. Uh, using the external battery pack, the external battery pack will handle about two-thirds of the power, while the internal battery hands, handles about a third, and uh, the camera will still overheat, but it'll take about 45 minutes. If you go to a dummy battery at 7.5 volts, uh, I found that it took an hour and 15 minutes to overheat, uh, but I also found that if you're running the power supply at 8.5 volts, it takes a little longer, uh, which means, at least to me, that the camera is not generating as much heat when you're supplying 8.5 volts. Um, again, you can use an external recorder to reduce the heat load in the camera. You can also turn off a number of options. And between all of those things, uh, I think uh, that should give you a very clear picture on how to proceed on your next project. So good luck and I will see you next time.